All right, to kick things off, we're gonna go ahead and do the warm up first. Go ahead and pause the video. Try these on your own first, and then once you are ready, unpause the video so we can go over it together. All right. Hopefully you tried these on your own. Remember, solving number one, we're going to use the inverse operation. And right now, the variable is being subtracted by 11, and we know the opposite of minus 11 is to add 11. And what I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other. These 11s cancel out. M equals 42 plus 11 gives me 53. Now, I know this is correct because I take this number, plug it in, 53 minus 11 does give me that 42. Next one, number two in a class, there are 20 total students. The ratio of girls to boys is one to four. How many girls in the class? Look, at give us a total amount of students. This is part to whole. We gotta make a table. So I have girls, boys, and we know the final column is total. So, this board. We have one to four. And you know that if there's one girl and four boys, that makes a total of five students. Eventually, we got to get that total to be 20. So we know that 5, 10, 15, 20, it would take four rows. The quicker way is just to multiply it by four. So that means this times four is 16, and this times four is four. So it's asking how many girls are there, so our answer would be four. Next one at a grocery store. A sign says three oranges for $1.20 at that same rate. How many would five oranges cost? Well, three oranges cost $1.20. Five is going to cost more than $1.20. So we've got to make sure our answer is more than that number right there. Now, when I'm setting up my ticket, I got money and I got oranges. How much money? Well, we're spending $1.20 for three oranges. We don't care about three oranges. We want to get five of them. Now, when you see something like this, we know that three does not evenly go into five, so we gotta knock it down to one first. We gotta find that unit rate. So getting it down to one, three to one, we gotta divide by three. What I do the top to the bottom, and a dollar twenty divided by three, your calculator says this number, but we know that 0 0.4 is really equal to 40 cents. All right, now to go back up to five, you could add it five times, but that's a waste of time, because we could also just multiply it by five, and 0 0.40, times five gives me two. And since it is dealing with money, our answer would look like this, two dollars. Last but not least, a right rectangular prism is shown below. Determine its volume. To find the volume, it is length times width times height. I believe gives you 36.75, or if you did the fraction, it's also going to be 36 and 3 fourths. So hopefully you want 4 for 4. Go ahead and put the big sheet away in your folder and move on to the daily dose. Pause the video and figure out which one of these stores charges 175 per ounce for each size jar. Consistently, they got to all be the price. Solve it on your own first. All right, when I'm doing this, it's price per ounce. When I'm setting up a ticket, we have money over ounces, and we gotta get it down to per one ounce. So a one is gonna be right here. So to go from ounces to one, remember anything divided by itself is one. So divided by ounces, divided by ounces. Really, I'm just doing the money divided by ounces. The dollar amount divided by ounces. So it's gonna be the right side divided by the left side. $21 divided by 12 did give me 175. 28 divided by 16 did give me $1.75. So far, so good. But the last one, 32.4 divided by 18, I believe was 1.8. Yes, 1.8, and we know that's $1.80. Do all three cost $1.75? No, because this one doesn't work, it means the whole thing doesn't work. Max is out. Let's look at Benny's. Well, Benny's off the get-go, cost divided by size, the dollar amount divided by ounces, nine divided by six was already 1.5, which is $1.50. That's already out. So hopefully Joe's is right. If you divide each 14 divided by eight, $1.75, 22.75 divided by this, 13, 175, last but not least, 
175. They all are a unit rate of 175. Joe's is your answer. Hopefully you got Joe's written down on your paper. If not, write it down. Move it on to middle math. Go. First of all, with division, we know, pause the video if you ain't done yet. All right. With division, we know we move to the left. So I'm just going to rewrite my number here. 87. And the decimal is located at the end. I need to have two zeros in front of the 87. So how many times is it going to move? One, two, three, four to get two zeros there. So my exponent, n equals four. Hopefully you got that written down. If not, go ahead and write down n equals four. Bringing us to today's activator. If you were here yesterday, this should be light work. Pause the video, do this on your own. All right, let's look at this. Four friends are having a free throw shooting competition. Ahmed made 17 out of 20. Ben made 6 out of 10, Christopher made 72%, and Deidre made 20 out of 25. First of all, we're trying to make all of these percentages because it's which friend had the greatest percentage of success? Who made the most shots percentage-wise? Well, this one automatically already told us that it's 72%. That one's done for us, okay? Now, with percents, we know that percent is always out of 100. So every single fraction, part to whole, so she made or he made 17 out of 20. You can't have 20 over 17. If you only took 17 shots, you can't make 20. It's 17 over 20 equals something over 100. You can find this middle number by doing 100 divided by 20. That gives us 5. That means 20 times 5 is 100. What are the times at the bottom? 17 times 5 is 85 over 100, and that is 85%. The next one, 6 out of 10. To get 10 to 100, we multiply by 10. So 6 times 10 is 60%. Last but not least, if I have 20 out of 25, to get that to 100, we would multiply 25 times 4. What are the top the bottom? 20 times 4 is 80. 80 over 100 means 80%. So we got 80%, 72%, 60%, and 85%. It looks like our man Ahmed had the greatest free throw percentage made. All right, let's move on. Boom. Go ahead and write this down in your notebook. Pause the video, write it down. All right, this is a review from yesterday, and then beneath this, we're going to have something new today, but we should all be able to do this. Remember, it's always parts to whole. Parts to whole. The total amount will always be our denominator. That's the number we got to get to 100. So if I have 15 out of 25 percent Per cent literally means per 100. We got to get this to 100. So from 25 to 100, 25, 50, 75, 100, that's 4. We multiply by 4. 15 times 4, 60. And 60 over 100 is 60%. Now the next one, a common mistake would be to put 20 over 18. That doesn't make sense because it's part over whole. The total amount is on the bottom. You cannot get 20 correct out of 18 questions. You can get 18 correct out of 20, though. Percents out of 100, 20 goes into 100, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, five times. So times five, times five, 18 times five is 90, and 90 over 100 means 90%. Those are the two answers there. That was reviewed from yesterday. Go ahead and copy that down because the most important part today is this section right there. What percent? Did they not get correct? What did they get incorrect? This is the new thing today. So remember, we already said percent is out of 100, so it's got to add up to 100. So if he got 60% correct, that means the rest he got incorrect. So we would just do 100 minus 60, and Mike got 40% incorrect. Copying this down. Well, let's look at Barry. If Barry got 90% correct, he got the majority of it correct. That means he only missed the rest. 100 minus 90 would be 10%. So if it ever gives you one amount and asks for the percent of the other, you have to subtract it. You got to take it away. Out of 100, part to whole percent, always out of 100. The other new thing we're doing today, go ahead and copy this down. Yesterday we talked about... When numbers go into 100, we talked about factors of 100 that we multiply up to get. Today, we're going to have denominators that are greater than 100. 
So instead of multiplying up to it, we're gonna have to divide it down. Again, percent is always out of 100, but we gotta figure out what I do to 200 to get down to 100. Since we're going down, we're gonna be dividing. If I do 200 divided by 100, it gives me two. That means 200 divided by two is 100. What I do to the top, I do to the bottom. 40 divided by two is 20. That means 40 out of 200 is equivalent to 20%. Give me a second to copy this down. If you need more time, pause the video. Based on this example, try these on your own. Pause. All right, let's look at these. Okay, again, percent, always out of 100. We're going down, so we're dividing. 100 goes into 300 three times. So 300 divided by three is 100. What do you do to the top? Do to the bottom, and 21 divided by three is seven. Seven out of 100 means 7%. 21 out of 300 is just a 7%. Next one, out of 100, we gotta divide it by two. 200 divided by two is 100. So 150 divided by two is 75. This one up here, should've got 75%. Last but not least, we have 500. We gotta get it down to 100. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. Goes into 500 five times, so I'm divided by five. What I do to the top, do the bottom. What is 45 divided by five? Nine. You know, nine out of 100 gives us a 9%. Those are the answers to those three problems. This is the assignment you have in Canvas. However, you will not get the code until you come and show me your exit ticket answer. Once you get the correct exit ticket answer, you can gain access to today's work. And as always, those are your options to do once you finish or if you finish early. Thank you very much.